Hey everybody, we're back with another episode of Classic Cars 101. Today we're going to talk about carburetors. Some of the different terminology, how to tell what carburetor a car has at a glance, uh, some of the different brands and, and things like that. Not really going into real in-depth of how a carburetor works, um, but again, just more some of the terms and things like that that you're going to hear. So if you've been watching any of these videos, you get some, some good information out of them and are enjoying them, please subscribe, uh, give a thumbs up, and uh, we'll dive right in here to carburetors. It's probably the most basic term you're going to hear when discussing carburetors is how many barrels it has. So you're going to hear one barrel, two barrel, four barrel. Um, what that is describing is the openings or venturis where air is allowed to go through there and pull in fuel to mix your air and fuel and, and put that into the engine in order for the engine to run. So essentially the more barrels you have, the more fuel the engine's going to get. So that kind of goes hand in hand with higher displacement engines typically have more barrels. So, you know, a four cylinder engine, six cylinder engine might have one barrel or might have two barrel. Whereas most of your V8s, your high performance stuff is gonna have at least a four barrel. Um, if not, we'll go into discussing dual quads and tri-power and stuff like that uh, here in a minute. But So again, that's it's basically just how many barrels, how many Venturis you have. Um, so we'll go out to the showroom here and show you what that one barrel and what a four barrel look like. All right, we'll start here with a four barrel. So you can see in a four barrel, what that means, I have to open this up here. You literally have four barrels there, or venturis, where the air goes through and gets fuel shot into it to create your air fuel mixture. So that's a four barrel there. We'll go look at some one barrels and two barrels too. All right, this old truck here, we've got an old truck with a flathead it has two one barrel carburetors so again if we look down in there you can see it's one barrel that's why they call it that so you'll see this a lot on older street rods vehicles from the 30s and 40s uh, you don't see it too much beyond that usually beyond that you're going to be going to two barrels and four barrels all right i don't have any dual quad setups or, or tri power or six pack setups out in the showroom right now so i'll just share a couple pictures of those but so now that we've kind of looked at how to tell the difference between a one barrel, two barrel, four barrel when you're out maybe looking at a car, possibly thinking about buying something or wondering what your car in the garage has. Um, some other terminology you're going to hear is people talking about having a dual quad setup. So I've got dual quads on my, you know, my old V8. Uh, so what a dual quad is, is just two four barrel carburetors. So it's a different intake uh, that houses two carburetors instead of one and they're usually hooked together. There's different types of linkage, but some sort of linkage where the car might run off of one carburetor most of the time, and when you're wide open throttle, it's gonna engage that second carburetor. Uh, another thing you're gonna hear a lot in the muscle cars, um, and some, some cars that aren't really considered muscle cars as well, but you're gonna hear about tri-power. Uh, tri-power is more of a Chevy term, and what that is is three two-barrel carburetors. So again, completely different intake than, than what would house just one two-barrel carburetor or one four-barrel carburetor. You're gonna have a different intake. It's gonna hold three two-barrel carburetors. And again, they're all gonna be linked together somehow to activate as you get more and more into the, the throttle. Um, another way to, to phrase that same thing, three two-barrel carburetors is to be a six-pack. So Mopar, you hear a lot of 440 six-pack, things like that on the, the Chargers, the Challengers. Um, CUDAs, things like that. So again, that's the same thing. It's, a, it's three two-barrel carburetors with a six-pack. Um, another term you're going to hear a lot of is when you're looking at carburetors is CFM. So that's cubic feet per minute. And that really states how much fuel this carburetor is going to be putting into your engine. Um, a lot of people think bigger is better, the more fuel, the more horsepower. That is true up to a point, but there is such a thing as, as going too big. And if you have a carburetor that's just dumping too much fuel into the engine, then your car is actually going to run worse than if you had gone a little bit smaller. So there's an actual calculation there to figure out um, your engine size and everything else and what CFM carburetor you should really be running uh, so that you kind of hit that sweet spot of 
it has all the fuel it needs, but not too much. Um, another thing you're going to look at if you're thinking about buying a car, again, a classic car or, or replacing a carburetor is the choke. So they do a couple different types of choke. They do electric choke. They do a manual choke. Um, what the choke is, is the choke basically blocks off a couple of the barrels or partially blocks them off. So you get less airflow, which means your, your air fuel ratio is more fuel. You're running a little richer, um, which it does when a car is colder so that it can get up to temperature. Then you kick that choke off and it'll run normal. Um, that's really more of a thing in some colder climates, you know, down here in central Florida, southern Florida, it's not something we have to worry about too often, maybe a week a year. Uh, but if you're up north, that's, that's something definitely you're going to have to worry about. So an electric choke is actually wired in and what it does is on startup, it closes that choke and then it backs it off as the car gets up to temperature. So that's something you don't have to worry about if it's set up properly. You bump the key, it will know whether it needs to activate the choke or not, and it will know when to back it off uh, and let the car operate normally. Uh, a manual choke is something you're going to see where there's an actual knob or cable you can pull in the cab. Uh, you pull that out, that activates the choke. Once it's ready, then you have to manually push it back in to take the choke off. Um, so there's two different options. You know, if you're if you're kind of a beginner to classic cars, you're not exactly sure what a car should sound like when it's running right or when it's ready to release that choke or anything like that an electric choke might be a better option for you um, one other thing i kind of wanted to go over keeping this video short but just some of the brands you're going to hear so some of the main brands for carburetors are going to be holly edelbrock uh, quick fuel technologies demon um, some of the some of the cars muscle cars back in the day and gm's got quadra jets so you hear that a lot um, some people call them quadra junks <laughs> uh, Ford used auto light there for quite a while. You had Strombergs and Carters on some of the older cars, a lot of the old one barrels, um, Rochesters and Webers. So that kind of, those are probably 90% of the, the carburetor brand you're going to hear out there. You'll hear different people talking about different ones, which ones are better, what you should have on your car. A lot of it's personal opinion. My, my take on probably the two biggest ones, which are going to be Holly and Edelbrock, what you're going to see on a lot of muscle cars. My take for that is that the Holly gives you a lot more adjustment, a lot more adjustability, which is phenomenal if you know how to do all of those adjustments and you're gonna keep up with it and, and adjust it for the seasons and the temperatures and, and your use. You know, are you cruising around town or are you heading to a, a, a track night that night? You can make adjustments to that so that it runs different. Uh, and Edelbrock's a little more of a plug and play. Bolt it on, hook up your fuel lines, hook up your linkage. Two quick adjustments and you're off and running and you shouldn't really ever have to mess with it again so that's just my quick take on a, a holly versus an metal brock so again if you got some good information out of this enjoyed what you're watching on any of our videos make sure you subscribe like and stay tuned for more thanks for watching